And uh, yeah. Okay, so bell ringer for today. Just watched a short video. Check that out on the announcement for today about Operation Barbarossa. So describe the op describe Operation Barbarossa. Why would Hitler turn on Stalin and the Soviet Union? So this operation will be the bloodiest conflict ever in world history, ever. So it's important you know it. Unbelievable stuff here. All right, so Operation Barbarossa, what do we have here for this? What do we got? What do we have? Someone, anyone, anyway, please. Chris, go ahead. Uh, this was a code name for the surprise attack of Nazi Germany and some other Axis allies attacking the most powerful allies. So Nazi Germany's initial goal was to take over the Western Soviet Union to make it uh, German. All right, good job, good job. So Operation Barbarossa, we left off talking about the war in Europe with Germany, pretty much having Great Britain surrounded, right? They have them pretty much uh, just isolated on their island, and there's really nowhere to go for the Allied powers in Europe, okay? Uh, before we get to that, though, I mean, obviously before the uh, Battle of Britain and everything like that, who was Stalin good friends with? Well, not great friends with, but he signed a pact, a non-aggression agreement with. Stalin, right? Yeah, so what did him and Stalin agree on? What did Stalin and Hitler agree on? Go ahead, Lance. Yeah, and what land did they take? No. No, that's country between Germany 
and the Soviet Union. It's a blank. Starts with a P. Poland. Yeah, Poland. Good job. Good job. So Stalin and Hitler both agreed, 1939, that they had a, a shared interest, right? And that was Poland. And that land we know is created at the end of World War I. Okay, so it looked kind of, uh, you know, like there was some sort of alliance, a friendship between these two powers. And uh, for many, many uh, countries all throughout the world, they couldn't believe it, that a fascist country and a communist country would agree with the one another, especially Stalin and Hitler. Hitler hated, right, communists. He hated uh, many of the Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, ethnic groups in the Soviet Union. So it just really didn't make any sense with this alliance. But we all knew that it won't last too long. You guys remember those political cartoons with the, those two jabbing each other in the back as they're holding hands and hugging each other? All right, sooner or later, Hitler would probably turn his back. But we know that Stalin, okay, for some reason, he thought that this agreement was a little bit different. And even after the Treaty of Versailles, once Hitler ripped that up to shreds and didn't follow it, even after the Munich Agreement, the Munich Pact, uh, you know, he ripped that to shreds and didn't follow it. For some reason, Stalin thought, ah, Hitler won't do this to us, right? Especially since the Soviet Union was doing what? What were they doing since the 1920s? What were they doing? It was called forced industrialization. It was a plan. Not plans, were they? Chris? Uh, five. Yep, you got it. Five. The five-year plans, right? Yeah, these five-year plans. But they didn't stop after five years, obviously. They continued on, right, until, obviously, when Stalin dies. A little bit even after when he dies. So these five-year plans of forced industrialization, we knew the Soviet Union was becoming a dominant, dominant threat. And uh, Hitler knew... If that he would, if he would give the Soviet Union a little bit more time, that they would be a really hard match to accomplish. That they would be too difficult to try to invade and take over. So it was now or never for Hitler. Okay. And what tactic do you think Hitler used to expand into the Soviet Union? And he caught Stalin off guard. What plan was it? What strategy? Haley? Blitzkrieg. Yep. Good job. Lightning warfare. All right, so not only did he go right up to Moscow, he also surrounded St. Petersburg. Okay, you guys ever hear of St. Petersburg, Soviet Union, Russia, right? St. Petersburg is right up here, guys, right along the Baltic Sea, and that's a great port of transportation, and it's a great port of resources and trade, especially from the United States, okay? So Germany surrounds St. Petersburg and tries to cut it off within. There's many people that died there. Okay, because they were cut off of resources. Also, St. Petersburg is very, very cold. So they cut off fuel resources, any type of materials coming in. And a lot of people actually froze and starved to death in St. Petersburg. They called it the siege of St. Petersburg. It lasted for about four years. Can you imagine that? Especially where they're located. Freezing cold temperatures, some cases negative 20 degrees without any type of fuel without any type of resources to stay warm. No food. Okay, so they literally starved these people in the city to try to force them to give it up and surrender. But, hey, St. Petersburg never gave it up. All right, next, they went to Moscow. Okay, all within 1942 here. Okay, so the German army is really marching, expanding into the Soviet Union. Did they fully take Moscow? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They stopped right there at the doors. They're like, you know what? This isn't really the target we want to accomplish. Yes, Moscow is the capital. But do you think the Soviet Union would give up if they take – where did Hitler aim his interest towards? What city did he want to take over? Again, this all happened in 1942. So the Germans were really, really far into the Soviet Union. And they're almost taking over all of these major industrial cities. But Soviets didn't give up, okay? So they stopped at Moscow. Hitler decided, you know what? Moscow is not the main target. We understand it's the capital. But let's go towards a different city. Haley? Stalingrad. Good job. Good job, Stalingrad. So Stalingrad, guys, is modern-day Volgograd, okay? So that's the city name now, Volgograd. It's all on the Volga River, okay? And this is an intersection point 
okay, right in the Middle East here in the southern portion of Russia, okay, Soviet Union at that time. And uh, obviously there's pretty much there's like four rivers coming together here. And that's great for industrial gains and trade so that they can supply their troops, you know, fighting on the Eastern Front and uh, receiving trade from other allied powers like the United States. So the goal for Germany is to capture capture Stalingrad, cut off trade, cut off another industrial city. Okay, that is fueling their military. Also, it leads to the Caucasus region. The Caucasus region is down here, right above, actually, the country of Georgia, where Georgie's from. How cool is that? How cool is that? And that's loaded, loaded, loaded with a resource called oil, right? And uh, if Hitler captures that, he can be self-sufficient on oil and not really worry about Okay, well, not really, I wouldn't say not really worry about, but he can sustain this war. He can last a little bit longer and fight off America and the advancing allied powers in the western portion of Europe. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. But why would Hitler turn on Stalin? Why would he do that? Why would he do that? We kind of have to look back at that book he wrote, right? What was that book he wrote? Mein Kampf, right? My struggle. And he described the issues, the depression after World War I in Germany was because of communists, right? Because of Jews. And uh, one of the biggest locations of the Loit, which he described as undesirable subhuman people, is the Soviet Union. Right? We know that he hates these groups of people, this country. Also, this country has is loaded with resources. If he captures Russia, the Soviet Union, he has agriculture. He can feed his troops, his people, forever, right? Oil, okay, different sources of fuel to fuel his military and be self-sufficient on these resources. All right, you guys good with that? You see why he turned on Stalin? It was unbelievable. Why would he turn his attention to Stalin? He did it in July. He thought he could take over a lot of the Soviet Union with ease like he did in Western Europe. But something comes into play which stops him. And that is going to be weather. I know, weather, stopping Blitzkrieg, cold conditions, stopping Blitzkrieg. Who would have believed it? And millions and millions of troops. <laughs> All right, okay. So the terms for today, I think you already have them. I think you wrote them down yesterday, but I just want to have put them up for you. Stalingrad, the Caucasus, do you guys have this here? Okay, cool, cool. So Stalingrad, the Caucasus, make sure you guys have that in your vocab. We're going to be talking about that today. All right, since you have that down, we won't spend any more time on it. Here is the notes for today. Oh, you didn't have that one. Sorry. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's why I wanted to show it because some of you may be in that at the uh, SATs. But if you weren't here, what should you do? Yeah, I know. Ah. I watched the video. I did the bell ringer. Oh, so you just watched the bell ring and didn't watch the rest of it. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> the caucuses. There you go. You got it? Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. So, again, we're just going to talk about Stalingrad today. I know there's a little bit more information on the slide uh, with the Mid-Atlantic. Mid but uh, real quick, so with the Mid-Atlantic, uh, as the United States is jumping into this war, who did the Allied powers, Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin agree was the biggest threat to the Allied powers? Who was the biggest threat? Someone said it. Haley, did you say it? Germany, right? Yeah, Germany. So Japan can hold off for now, right? We can focus our attention on Japan once Germany's taken care of, okay? So the Allied powers came together and they're like, you know what? We need to stop Germany because they are a militaristic threat. They are so dominant. They have the most advanced weaponry. If we don't stop them now, it might be too little, too late. Okay. So the Allied powers came together and talked about that. Make sure you guys remember that big three. Okay. Churchill, Roosevelt, and Stalin. Also, there's another power, another country being added to an alliance, the Allied Powers, and that is the Soviet Union. Okay, we left off, right, just having Great Britain and France and the United States. Now the Soviet Union is being added to that. So we have four major powers, major players into this war. 
And realistically, France got taken over, right? Great Britain, they're just holding on. to try to stop the aggressive German army, the Vermont. All right, but anyway, the Mid-Atlantic, okay, we all know in World War I, it was very difficult for the United States to try to aid the Allied powers because of what? What was out and about in the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean here, that was causing a lot of turmoil, a lot of issues, a lot of problems for our convoy systems, our cargo ships, our supply lines, our ships. Go ahead, let's... The U-boats, exactly, exactly. Even in World War I, moving into World War II, after all these years, you think we'd come up with a better idea to try to evade around these uh, uh, these U-boats. Well, it was really difficult to do, especially with these submarines. Yeah, we're gaining radar. Okay, yeah, we have uh, underwater you know, mines, really, in depth charges that we can maybe sink some of these U-boats. But at the same time, they're very difficult to combat against. They can move underwater at a very fast rate. It was up for the United States to utilize a convoy system. So a convoy system is really just having battleships and submarines in a way to try to protect a lot of the cargo ships going across the Atlantic to try to help and aid the Allied powers. All right, we'll also talk about Operation Torch. Okay, This is where the United States is going to attack first, right? This is how they're going to try to put troops in the ground in Western Europe. Where? Northern Africa. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit later here. But with Operation Barbarossa, it looked like Germany was unmatched, all right? It was, looked like they were uh, an unbearable force, an unstoppable force. Their Blitzkrieg attacks through the late you know, summer into early fall was just too much for the Soviet Union. Yeah, they were attacking at a fast rate with the Luftwaffe, right, Chris? Yeah, and these armored tanks and these armored vehicles. And the Soviets were getting pushed back. Like I said, St. Petersburg was surrounded. Moscow, yeah, the forces were right up next to the door, and they decided to go to Stalingrad. Right, like I mentioned, Stalingrad is this industrial area okay, in the southwest of Russia, Soviet Union. So if you guys see it on a map, that's where it's located. It's modern-day Volgograd. And they named that the Volga River. Why else do you think Hitler would want to take this area? Yeah, it's heavily industrialized. It's the gateway to the Caucasus, like I talked yesterday, for all the oil, all the resources that Hitler would ever want and need to try to fuel his military. Why else? Why else? Why do we think? It's really a simple reason. So I guess you can say there's three main reasons. Number one, we talked about it, okay? It's an industrial area. There's rivers, transportation system to the city that helps uh, with the Allied powers, the United States helping them with supplies and armaments. It's the gateway to the Caucasus, this oil-enriched area and region in the Soviet Union. But why else? It's really simple. I promise you. I think you're overthinking it. Go ahead, Haley. What's that? Power. Power. Okay. Okay, not the one I'm looking for. All right, so Laban's realm, obviously, that's one reason, too. But I'm looking for three main points here. Why Hitler would try to take Stalingrad. Haley? Their pride. Okay, good. You're on the right track. How would they take away their pride? What's so significant about the name Stalingrad? Let's. Named after it's named after their leader. Okay. Yep. Simple reason. Simple reason. So if Stalingrad, the city named after Stalin, was taken over, the Germans took it, that would really crush the morale of the Soviets. One thing the Soviets have is a lot of troops, a lot of industrial gains, obviously, with the five year plan. Okay. But if you crush the morale, crush the will of the people by taking the, the city that is named after the leader, it would probably be too much for them. Obviously, the resources. Yep, the gateway to the Caucasus. Yes, the industrial area right there in the Soviet Union. But taking Stalingrad is really just throwing the salt in the wound, isn't it? You know, Hitler loves to do that. We know the surrender of France. That's exactly what he wanted to try to accomplish. All right, so one of the biggest things that stopped this advancement and really uh, 
uh, caused Stalingrad to be the bloodiest battle probably ever in world history was because of the cold weather, right? The environment of the Soviet Union. A lot of the Soviets were living in this, these conditions forever, their whole lives. They're used to it, right? Germans, they're equipped with summer wardrobe, okay? Full-time, you know, obviously uh, clothing and equipment, right? So they weren't used to this. They weren't prepared for this weather whatsoever. So there they are with you know, shorts and T-shirts pretty much. I don't want to say shorts and T-shirts, but clothing that wasn't really suitable for these conditions whatsoever, okay? So many of these troops really just couldn't fight in this environment, couldn't fight in this cold weather. And let's face it, since 1939, Blitzkrieg was really running rampant over Europe, wasn't it? You think these troops are tired? Oh, heck yeah. They were all over, over here in Western Europe. Now they're all the way over here in the Soviet Union. Bang, 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 bang. No rest. Okay? No rest at all. So that being said, this was just really a long, drawn-out war for the Wehrmacht. Okay? This was a lot of travel, a lot of distance covered, constant fighting, constant combat, and the Germans just weren't equipped for this style of fighting in the environment. Also, this was a new style of fighting, okay, a new environment for them, not only because it was cold, a lot of the uh, machinery was shutting down and clogging up because of how cold it really was. Really, the mechanisms were just shutting down. A lot of the tanks, the armored vehicles would just stop right in its tracks. Also, it was an urban fight style, you know, fighting style. It was an urban style of uh, setting, okay, an environment. They're not used to fighting home to home, building to building, okay, constant bombardment from the Luftwaffe and other, other air forces, especially the Soviets, right? So this was really a new type of warfare for the Germans, okay, that they weren't used to. Fighting in this industrial area, home to home, building to building, okay, trying to avoid being crushed by their own air force, their own bombing runs. Many Soviets decided, well, we'll fight from the sewers, right? We'll fight underneath the ground, try to protect ourselves from the air force that is pounding us, the Luftwaffe, right? And uh, we'll try to use our environment to our advantage. They knew the city. They knew how to maneuver around the area a lot better than what the Germans did. So realistically, this was a prolonged battle. Like I said, in the heavy elements with the cold weather, a lot of the machinery was shutting down on the Germans. And at the same time, the Soviets kind of sat back on the Volgo River and collected supplies and resources to continue to fight. Also, what else do you think the Soviets used to help them benefit and win this battle? It was a total war. What does total war mean? What does total war mean? So women, children fighting, right? So this is really the first time we see women on the battlefield with snipers. Children running out pretty much with bombs strapped to their chest, trying to blow up as many Germans as possible. It was a really sad sight, but... The Soviets wanted to do everything they could to never surrender, to never give up. And that was Stalin's orders. Also, many of these Soviets, because they had lack of resources and sometimes equipment, right? some of them, they weren't even given guns. They just had millions of people just flying into the lines trying to push back the German army. And there was no surrender, no backing up, no retreating. So they actually had commanders and generals of the Soviets standing behind the troops, and if they turned around, what do you think these generals and commanders would do to them once? What do you think? Sure. They shot them, exactly. Shot their own people. It's like, hey, you're not turning around. You're going guns a blazing. Well, I don't have a gun. Well, the guy in front of you, once he... But the Soviets never wanted to give up. They never stopped. So the elements, right? We can say that they're fighting underneath the sewers, fighting home to home in this new setting of warfare in this industrial city okay where these buildings were collapsing all around they knew the environment like i said the weather was definitely terrible total war women children joining into the fight and the fact that the soviets just will never surrender and even their own generals and commanders will shoot their troops if they turn around if they look back okay that's really how the soviets won this battle and this is the turning point in the war. So by 1943, when this battle stopped, so 1942 to 1943, this was almost a year-long battle, 
where there's casualties out the wazoo, they still don't know the accurate number. They say close to a million soldiers died right here in Stalingrad. Okay, it was a crazy number, especially just in one battle alone. This was the turning point in the war, though. Okay, by 1943, the Soviets totally stopped the German army. And from here on out, we'll see the German army actually being pushed back to their own borders on the Eastern Front. So how's it look for the Allied powers now? Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Is Great Britain still isolated, though? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. We're going to talk about the United States, where they're going to attack. I already mentioned, I think, Northern Africa. And this is going to set up a what type of war for Germany? Something that they wanted to try to avoid. Ethan? A two-front war. It's actually going to be a three-front war, which is going to be interesting. When Battle of D-Day, okay, they're actually going to come in from the northwest in the southwest, and the Soviets here on the east. Oh, my gosh. So the Germans are really going to be surrounded and being pushed back. Is there any questions on that, guys? I know there's a lot of information there with Stalingrad. But um, maybe at the end of the chapter, I can show you a movie just because this is a long chapter. It's called Enemy at the Gates. It's really good. Maybe I'll show you something different. I don't know. We'll see. But it's really about the Battle of Stalingrad. Okay. Okay. So here's just a picture of Stalingrad at the top left. Like I said, you can see the buildings around here. You can see how this was fighting from building to building, home to home. And this was a new setting for the Germans to be fighting in this type of environment. And their blitzkrieg attacks were halted because of how cold it really was. There's a constant fog over the, over the city, so the Luftwaffe was really out of commission. A lot of the tanks, armored vehicles, would gunk up because of how cold it really was. The mechanisms, the machinery, the, the engines would just stop working. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, so there's Stalingrad for you. I didn't want to I didn't want to crush you with this. I didn't want to hurt your feelings, but we do have a quiz tomorrow on the Pacific map. I promise you it won't be hard. Okay. Just want to let you know. Pacific map, I will put it up on the board just like the European map, and you can fill up the Google form like so. It won't take you long, and after that is completed, okay, I will have a battles project for you. Very similar to what we did with World War I, but this time with World War II. There might be some battles on there that we might not have talked about yet, or we'll talk about. That's why you need to research, right? What's up, Haley? I saw your hand up first. Yes, yep. So I think I posted that about two weeks ago or so. The Pacific Theater. Yep. Just the map. Yep, just the map. So make sure you guys look over that Pacific Theater map. I, I'm giving you a little bit of time here to look over it. Like I said, I don't like surprise you with stuff, but I almost forgot about it. And I think it's important that we discuss over these locations, especially when we're getting into Coral Sea, which we talked about. The uh, Midway, Battle of Midway. And eventually these island hopping techniques with the United States will accomplish. So there you have it. There you have it. What's up, Angel? I still to take that oh my gosh. I had a video for you for Stalingrad, but how about I wait for it? Okay, like I said, I think it's more important that you're ready for this specific map. Wait. Okay.